Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube live stream of our Torah portion reading. My name is Adam, your host, and I welcome you. And as you can see, we're not in our normal setting in my camper. We are at the Petrified National Forest here in Arizona, uh, one of my favorite places on earth. I remember coming here, I think it was in second or third grade on a field trip, and I was just... Uh, I was amazed at Yah's creation back then, and now as an adult, uh, anytime I'm passing through here, I always want to stop here. So, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have our traditional Torah portion study. It's going to really be mostly a reading with just a few little comments uh, here and there from me. But, you know what? That's perfect, because sometimes we just need to hear the word, and that's what people have to say. So, uh, let's start with a quick prayer. Shofar Blast, and we'll get into this week's Torah portion, which is uh, Finehas, Pinchas, which is uh, Numbers 25, 9 through 30, verse 1. A pretty long Torah portion. We have a lot to read, so uh, let's get to it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, we come before you and bless you in Yahusha's name. Father, thank you for calling us out of this world. Thank you for showing us your word is the truth. Thank you for, for showing us Messiah. Um, thank you for your beautiful creation, and what a reminder of that is today, Father, and we just ask that your Ruach will be with us as we read your word together in Yahushua's mighty name. Amen and hallelujah. Shofar. So we're gonna we're gonna read in like different places. I want you all to see many different places of this park while we read. I don't know when the last time the word of Yahweh was read in this most amazing place. So uh, this Torah portion starts at Numbers 25, verse 9. But I want to read, start reading verse 1 so we can remember exactly where we were from last week. Numbers 25, chapter one, or verse 1. And Yashar abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their Elohim. And people did eat and bow down to their Elohim. And Yashar joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Yasharel. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before Yahweh against the sun, that the fierce anger of Yahweh may be turned away from Yasharel. And Moshe said unto the judges of Yasharel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Yasharel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moshe, and in the sight of all the assembly of the children of Yasharel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, saw it, he rose up from the among the assembly and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Yashrael into the tent and thrust both them through, the man of Yashrael and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Yashrael. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Yashrael, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Yashrael in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his Elohim, and made atonement for the children of Yashrael. Now the name of the Yashrelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Kalu, a prince of the chief house among the Shimonim. And the name of the Midianite woman that was slain was Kozbai, the daughter of Zer. He was head over the people and a chief in the house of Midian. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Vex the Midianim and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Kozbai. The daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. So Phinehas was rewarded for doing this valiant act. And it reminded me of something I read in uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 2. And let's see, 1 Maccabees chapter 2. And let's see. This is when they were trying to get uh, Matthias to sacrifice to other gods in the days of um, the Maccabees. So out of verse 15, In the meanwhile, the king's officers, such as compelled the people to revolt, came into the city Modin to make them sacrifice. And when many of Yashrael came unto them, Matityahu also and his sons came together. Then answered the king's officers and said to Matityahu on this wise, You are a ruler and an honorable and great man in this city, and strengthened with sons and brethren. 
Now therefore come you first and fulfill the king's commandment, like as all the heathen have done, yea, and the men of Yahuda also, and such as remain at Jerusalem. So shall you and your house be in the number of the king's friends, and you and your children shall be honored with silver and gold and many rewards. Then Matityahu answered and spoke with a loud voice, Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him, and fall away every one from the belief of their fathers, and give consent to his commandments, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Far be it that we should forsake the Torah and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our belief either on the right hand or the left. Now when he had left speaking these words, there came one of the Yahudim in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar, which was at Modin, according to the king's commandment. Which thing, when Matatyahu saw, he was inflamed with zeal, and his mind trembled, neither could he forbear to show his anger according to the judgment. Wherefore he ran and slew him upon the altar. Also the king's commissioner, who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time, and the altar he pulled down. Thus dealt he zealously for the Torah of Elohim, like as Phinehas did unto Zimri, the son of Shalom. Shalom. And Matatyahu cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the Torah and maintains the covenant, let him follow me. So he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that they ever had in the city. Then, then many that sought after the justice and judgment went down into the wilderness to dwell there, both they and their children and their women and their cattle, because afflictions increased sore upon them. So today is not a day where we're going around poking people or slaying people with javelins or swords, but... This is a time, I believe, brothers and sisters, in the spiritual to stand up, to stand up for what's right, to stand for the Torah, regardless of persecution, regardless of uh, what others may say against you, and regardless of the way this world is going, that this is a time to stand up like Phinehas and like Matityahu and his sons to be zealous for the Torah. And we know that Yahweh will be with us and protect us. Another passage from 1 Maccabees chapter 2, starting at verse 49. Now when the time drew near that Matityahu should die, he said unto his sons, Now has pride and rebuke gotten strength in a time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the Torah and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall you receive with great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? Yosef in the time of his distress kept the commandment it was made Adonai of Mitzrayim. Phinehas, our father, in being zealous and, our, and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Yahusha, for fulfilling the word, was made judge in Yasharel. Caleb, for bearing witness before the assembly, received the heritage of the land. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Eliyahu, for being zealous and fervent for the Torah, was taken up into heaven. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of the lions. And thus consider ye throughout all ages, that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returned into the dust, and his thought is come to nothing. Wherefore, ye, my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in behalf of the Torah, for by it shall you obtain glory. Now, back to Numbers 20. Well, now we're at 26. So, just a quick reminder last week and part of this week is the era of Balaam. Balaam was not able to curse the Israelites, but what he was able to do was get them to curse themselves by putting stumbling blocks before them, or stumbling blocks before them, much like the world does today, especially with Hollywood, the music industry, they promote lawlessness and promote corruption so that people will be enticed by these ways and curse themselves. Now, uh, chapter 26 of Numbers, and it came to pass after the plague that Yahweh spoke unto Moshe and unto Eleazar, the son of Aharon the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the assembly of the children of Yashorel from 20 years old and upward, throughout their father's house, all that were able to go to war in Yashorel. And Moshe and Eleazar the priests spoke with them in the plains of Moab, by the Yardan, near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upwards, as Yahweh commanded Moshe and the children of Yashorel, which went forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, Reuben, 
the eldest son of Yashrael, the children of Reuben, Hanuk, of whom comes the family of the Hanukim, of Palu, the family of the Paluim, of Chetzron, the family of the Chetzronim, of Karmai, the family of the Karmaim. These are the families of the Rebunim, and they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the assembly, who strove against Moshe and against Ahron in the company of Korah, when they strove against Yahuwah. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah, when that company died, what time the fire devoured the 250 men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korach died not. The sons of Shimon, after their families, of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelim, of Yami, the family of the Yaminim, of Yakin, the family of the Yakinim, of Zerach, the family of the Zarchim, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulim. These are the families of the Shimonim, 20 and 2,200. The children of Gad, after their families, Tsephon, the family of the Tsephonim, Haggai, the family of the Hagim, of Shunai, the family of the Shunim, of Oznai, the family of the Oznim, of Irai, the family of the Erim, of Arod, the family of the Arodim, of Arelai, the family of the Arelaim. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, 40 and five, 40, I'm sorry, 40,500. Verse 19, the sons of Yahudah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Yahudah after their families were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanim, of Peretz, the family of the Partzim, of Zerach, the family of the Zarchim. And the sons of Peretz were of Chetzron, the family of the Chetzronim, of Chamul, the family of the Chamulim. These are the families of Yahudah according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Yisachar, after their families, of Tola, the family of the Tolaim, of Pua, the family of the Punim, of Yashub, the family of the Yashubim, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronim. These are the families of Yisachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Sered, the family of the Kardim, of Elon, the family of the Elonim, of Yachleel, the family of the Yachleelim. That was a tough one. These are the families of the Zebulonim, according to those that were numbered of them. Three score thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Yosef, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, Makir, the family of the Makrim. And Makir begat Gilead, and Gilead come the family of the Galidim. These are the sons of Gilead, of Eleazar, the family of the Ezerim. Chelek, of the family of the Chelkim. And Asriel, the family of the Asrielim. And Shechem, the family of the Shechem. And of Shemida, the family of Shemiyadim, and of Shefer, the family of the Sheferim, and Selophehad, the son of Sefer, had no sons, but daughters. And the names of the daughters were of Selophehad were Malka and Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirza. These are the families of Anasha, and those that were numbered of them, fifteen two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families. Shutelach, the family of the Shutelachim, of Beker, the family of the Bakrim. Of Tachan, the family of the Tachinim. And these are the sons of Shutelach, of Iran, the family of the Iranim. See, this, these are the families of the Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, 30 and 2,500. These are the sons of Yosef after their families. The sons of Benyanim after their families, of Bela, the family of the Balim. Of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelim. Of Achiram, the family of the Achiarim. Of Shefufam, the family of the Shufavanim. Of Chupam, the family of the Chupamim. And the sons of Bela and Ard and Naaman, of Ard, the family of the Ardim. And of Naaman, the family of the Naamim. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan after their families, of Hushim, the family of the Hushimim. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Hushimim, according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Asher, after their families, Yimna, the family of the Yimnaim, of Yishbai, the family of the Yishbiim, of Beria, the family of the Beriim, of the sons of Beria, of Hever, the family of the Heverim, of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielim, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Serach. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, 
We're 50 and 3,400. And so now, now we're gonna take a look at the daughter of Asher, Sirach, who was really the only female mentioned in all this genealogy. Now we're gonna find out what was so special about Sirach. This is Yashar chapter 54, starting at verse 89. And he commanded them saying, when you come into the land of Canaan, do not come suddenly before my father in this affair, but act in your wisdom. And Yosef ceased to command them, and he turned and went back to Mitzrayim. And the sons of Jacob went to the land of Canaan with joy and cheerfulness to their father Jacob. And they came unto the borders of the land, and they said each to each other, What shall we do with this matter before our father? For if we come suddenly to him and tell him the matter, he will be greatly alarmed at our words and will not believe us. And they went along until they came nigh into their houses, and they found Sirach, the daughter of Asher, going forth to meet them. And the damsel was very good and subtle. And knew how to play upon the harp and they called unto her and she came before them and she kissed them and they took her and gave unto her a harp saying go now before our father and sit before him and strike upon the harp and speak these words and they commanded her to go to their house and she took the harp and hastened before them and she came and sat near Jacob, and she played well and sang and uttered in the sweetness of her words yosef my uncle is living and he rules throughout the land of Mitzrayim and is not dead. And she continued to repeat and utter these words. And Yaakov heard her words, and they were agreeable to him. He listened while she repeated them twice and thrice. And joy entered into the heart of Yaakov at the sweetness of her words. And the Ruach of Elohim was upon him. And he knew all her words to be true. And Yaakov blessed Sarah when he spoke these words before him. And he said unto her, My daughter, may death never prevail over you. For you have revived my ruach. Only speak yet before me as you have spoken. For you have gladdened me with all your words. And she continued to sing these words. And Yaakov listened and it pleased him. And he rejoiced and the ruach of Elohim was upon him. The reason they had her sing these words instead of just going up to Yaakov, their father, and saying, Father, Joseph is alive. Because they probably knew the record of when Sarah was told the news that Isaac was still alive. Uh, actually, to back up. Uh, Sarah was told that Isaac had died, that Abraham had slaughtered him upon the altar. So she went to go seek him out. And then as she couldn't find them, then Hasatan appeared to, uh, to Sarah and said, uh, just kidding, Isaac is alive. And she was overjoyed and she actually died from just being overjoyed of heart. And so they probably knew that story. And they were like, you know what? Let's tell Yaakov, our father, subtly. So they did this. So they told Sarah, uh, the daughter of Asher, to go sing and play. And he believed her. And she was blessed and this is why she's also recorded in the genealogy as well back to numbers 26 verse 47 these are the uh these are the families of the sons of asher according to those that were numbered of them who were 50 and 3400 of the sons of naphtali after their families of yachzael the family of the yachzaelim of gunai the family of the gunim of yetzer the family of the yetzerim of shilem the family of the shemelim these are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were numbered of the children of Yisrael, six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And Yahweh spoke on and spoke unto Moshe, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of the names. To many you shall give the more inheritance, and to few you shall give the less inheritance. To every one shall be his inheritance to be given according to those that were numbered of him. So we know that one of the first commandments was to be fruitful and multiply. And those that were very fruitful and multiplied more got more inheritance. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers shall they inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Leviim. After their families of Gershon, the family of the Gershonim. Of Kohath, the family of the Kohathim. Of Merari, the family of the Meraraim. These are the families of the Leviim. The family of the Levinim. The family of the Hevronim. The family of the Machlim. The family of the Mushim. The family of the Korchim. And Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's woman was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bore to Levi in Mitzrayim. And she bore unto Amram Ahron and Moshe and Miriam their sister. And unto Ahron was born Nadab and Abihu and Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died, and they offered strange fire before Yahuwah. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward.
For they were not numbered among the children of Yashrael because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Yashrael. These are they were not, that were numbered by Moshe and Eliezer the priest, who numbered the children of Yashrael in the plains of Moab by the Yardan near Jericho. But among these was not a man of them whom Moshe and Achron the priest numbered, when they numbered the children of Yashrael in the wilderness of Sinai. For Yahweh said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness, and there was not left a man, save Caleb the son of Yephunneh, and Yahusha the son of Nun. So, as we see in the Torah, people are numbered for really two main reasons, for war and for the distribution of the inheritance. That's something really interesting. When you take a look at Revelation chapter 7 and 14, and you're wanting to get some insight of who these 144,000 are, um, well, all we have to do is take a look at the Torah, and it gives us an idea of why people are numbered. Chapter 27. Then came the daughters of Tzilophachad, the son of Sefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, and these are the names of his daughters, Malka, Noah, and Chogla, and Milka, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moshe, and before Eliezer the priest, and before the princes and all the assembly, by the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yahuwah, and the company of Korach, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he has no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moshe brought their cause before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, The daughters of Tzalophachad speak right. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And you shall speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, If a man die and have no son, then he shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then he shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then he shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then he shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen, that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto his, the children of the Yashrael a statute of a judgment, as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Get you up into this Mount Avarim, and see the land which I have given to the children of Yashrael. And when you have seen it, you also shall be gathered unto your people, as Ahron your brother was gathered. For you rebelled against my commandment in the, des in the desert of sin, in the strife of the assembly, to sanctify me at the waters before their eyes, that is the water of Meribah and Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. And Moshe spoke unto El Yahuwah, saying, Let Yahuwah, the Elohiah of the Ruachot of all flesh, set a man over the assembly, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the assembly of Yahuwah be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Take Yahusha, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Ruach, and lay your hand upon him, and set him before Eliezer the priest, and before all the assembly, and give him a charge in their sight. And you shall put some of your honor upon him, that all the assembly of the children of Yashel may be obedient. When I looked up this word, Hebrew word for honor, it was like glory or, um, it's like, like, like renown. Um, so, it's like, you remember when, when Moshe came down from the mount, he had uh, this presence or this glory about him. Verse 21, And she shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel before him, after the judgment of the Uri, before Yahuwah. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Yashrael with him, even all the assembly. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded him. And he took Yahusha, and set him before Eliezer the priest, and before all the assembly. And he laid his hands upon him, and gave him a charge, as Yahuwah commanded him by the hand of Moshe. Chapter 28. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savor unto me, shall you guard to offer unto me in their appointed time. And you shall say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which you shall offer unto Yahuwah, two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual ascending smoke offering. The one lamb shall you offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall you offer in the evening. I'm going to pause there real quickly. Uh, last week, we, in our local fellowship, we were doing a, we do a weekly uh, Monday Midrash. And the topic was prayer. And one of the things that came to mind was the, the morning and evening sacrifice. It was to be offered continually. And we know through many scriptures that 
our prayers are offered as uh, their, their spiritual sacrifices. First Peter 2 5 says that we're a real priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Um, Revelation 8, I believe it is, or 9 says that um, our prayers are ascend up as incense before him. And so when people are asking, you know, what does prayer look like? You know, understanding that we are the tabernacle and that we're to offer up sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, that is, I think a good place to start is to offer up a prayer in the morning and evening. Uh, we see the prophet Daniel, he did it three times a day. He did morning, afternoon, and evening. So, uh, you know, for someone that wants to grow in their prayer life, I believe prayer first thing in the morning, first thing before you get about your busy day, uh, pray. Offer up an offering to him. Come before him with thanksgiving. And the last thing you do before you go to bed, give him thanks or pray or petition, whatever is on your mind. But I think that's a great thing to do. Uh, so let's keep going. Verse 5, And the tenth part of an ephah of, of flour for an oblation mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. It is a continual ascending smoke offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. And the drink offering thereof shall be a fourth part of a hen for the lamb, for the one lamb. In the holy place shall you cause the strong wine to be poured out unto Yahuwah for a drink offering. And the other lamb shall you offer at evening as the oblation of the morning. And as the drink offering thereof, you shall offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. It's interesting here in verse 7 that one of the offerings to Yahuwah was strong, strong wine. Some people argue that uh, wine didn't have alcohol back in those days. Well, it's interesting that the ferment, the the process of stopping fermentation and just making grape juice uh, wasn't invented until the Welches did. I think it was in the 17 or 1800s. But you know, some people, a lot of people, well, some people will say that you know, wine is is a, drinking wine is a sin, uh, which I don't believe. So, I think being a drunk is a sin. The Testament of Judah. If you want to read more about that, the Testament of Judah, I think, is a great read for that for anyone that wants to know more about. Uh, drinking wine he says that if you can't control yourself don't drink if you can drink in moderation enjoy yourself verse 8 and the other lamb you shall offer at evening as the oblation of the morning and as the drink offering thereof you shall offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto yahuwah and on the shabbat two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of a flour for an oblation mingle with oil and the drink offering thereof this is the ascending smoke offering of every Shabbat beside the continual ascending smoke offering and his drink offering. So it's interesting. Some people say, you know, every day is the Sabbath to me. Well, it's interesting. You know, some people say that, you know, I worship him every day. Why do I need to worship him on the Sabbath? Well, it's interesting that there's supposed to be an offering every day per the Torah, as we just read, but even more so on the Sabbath on top of your, uh, your daily, uh, daily prayers. Verse 11. And in the beginning is of your months, you shall offer an ascending smoke offering unto Yahuwah. Two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three tenth deals of flour for an oblation, mingled with oil one for one of bullock, and two tenth deals of flour for an oblation, mingled with oil for one ram, and a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for an oblation unto one lamb, for an ascending smoke offering of a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and their drink offering shall be a half a hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of a hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the ascending smoke offering of every month throughout your months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto Yahuwah shall be offered beside the continual ascending smoke offering and his drink offering. Verse 16. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Pesach of Yahuwah. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall matzah be eaten, and the first day shall be a holy assembly. You shall do no manner of servile work therein, but you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for an ascending smoke offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their oblation shall be a flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals shall you offer for a bullock, and two tenth deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall you offer for every lamb, throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the ascending smoke offering. In the morning, which is for a continual ascending smoke offering, after this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. It shall be offered beside the continual ascending smoke offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh, 
I'm sorry. And on the seventh day, you shall have a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work. And in the day of Bikor, when you bring a renewed oblation unto Yahuwah in your Shavuot, you shall have a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work. But you shall offer the ascending smoke offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their oblation of flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals unto a bullock, two tenth deals unto one ram, a several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. You shall offer them beside the continual ascending smoke offering and his oblation. They shall be unto you without blemish and their drink offerings. Chapter 29. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work there. It is Yom Teruah unto you. And you shall offer an ascending smoke offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. One young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their oblation shall be a flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals for a bullock, and two tenth deals for a ram, and one tenth deal for a lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Beside the ascending smoke offering of the month and his oblation, and the daily ascending smoke offering and his oblation, and their drink offerings according unto their manner, for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. And so here you also see that it's not just about worshiping him every day or the Sabbath is, you know, every day for me. It's we have the, the worshiping him every day and the offerings every day plus the uh, feast days plus the Sabbaths and the new moons as well. Verse 7. And you shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month a holy assembly and you shall afflict your souls, but you shall not do any work therein. But you shall offer an ascending smoke offering unto Yahuwah for a sweet savor, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their oblation shall be a flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals to a bullock, and two tenth deals to a ram, a several tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual ascending smoke offerings and the oblation of it and their drink offerings. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work, and you shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. And you shall offer an ascending smoke offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year. They shall be without blemish, and their oblation shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals unto every bullock of thirteen bullocks. Two tenth deals to each ram of the two rams and a several tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual ascending smoke offerings, his oblation and his drink offering. And on the second day, offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without spot, and their oblations and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual ascending smoke offering, and the oblation thereof, and their drink offerings. And on the third day, eleven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their oblation and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual ascending smoke offering, and his oblation, and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, their oblation and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering beside the continual ascending smoke offering, his oblation and his drink offering. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams and fourteen lambs the first year without spot. And their oblation and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual ascending smoke offering and his oblation and the drink offering. And on the sixth day, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their oblations, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual ascending smoke offering, and his oblation, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their oblation, and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual ascending smoke offering, his oblation, and his drink offering. On the eighth day, you shall have a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an ascending smoke offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, one bullock, one ram, 
seven lambs unto the first year without blemish, their oblation and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram and for the lamb shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual ascending smoke offering and his oblation and his drink offering. These things shall you do unto Yahuwah in your set feasts beside your vows and your freewill offerings for your ascending smoke offerings and for your oblations and for your drink offerings and for your peace offerings. And Moshe told the children of Yashrael according to all that Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. What's really interesting about these offerings on um, with Sukkot is if you actually number all the bullocks that are offered, you have 70 representing the 70 nations. And we talked a little bit about this last week's Torah portion about how the 70 nations were dispersed, but Israel, Yah's people, was the 71st nation. But it's interesting, uh, we'll look that uh, in the last days, or actually in the time of the, uh, in the time of the millennial kingdom, you'll see that everyone must come up to Sukkot. Uh, Zechariah 14, verse 16, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Yerushalayim shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh Sebaot, and to keep the feast of Sukkot. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Yerushalayim to worship the king, Yahweh Sebaot, even upon them shall be no rain. And, the and if the family of Mitzrayim go not up and come not, that have, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of Sukkot. This shall be the punishment of Mitzrayim and the punishment of all nations that come not to keep the feast of Sukkot. So it's interesting that, um, you know, Yahuwah is always thinking of all the nations. From the very beginning, he's always wanted all nations to serve him. And that's exactly what's going to happen. We read about that in Revelation 15, that all the nations will come and worship you. Praise Yahuwah. We can't forget chapter 30, verse 1. And Moshe spoke unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Yashrael, saying, This is the thing which Yahuwah has commanded. And verse 2 goes into next week's Torah portion. So I pray that this was a blessing for you. Uh, if you're ever in the Arizona area across I-40, I would highly recommend coming to the Petrified National Forest. Uh, I absolutely love this place. There's just something beautiful about it. Uh, take a look at some of this petrified wood right here. Uh, it's just amazing just looking at Yahuwah's creation uh, concerning all of it. But um, as far as uh, announcements, uh, registration for Sukkot is up now. I'll have the link in the description box for you if you're interested in joining. It'll be in Lebanon, Missouri. The uh, actual dates of Sukkot are, at least the calendar we do, is October 10th to the 18th. But I believe we'll be camping from October 9th through the 19th. So hope to see you there. And uh, if any of you are in the Arizona area and you see this uh, on Shabbat, we'll be at the, uh, I think it's called the Living Waters Fellowship in Mesa, Arizona, it's right next, next to Phoenix. If you're interested, send me an email. I can get you the information if you're uh, in the area. But other than that, brothers and sisters, let's end with some prayer. And uh, we'll see you next week. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, Abba, we just come before you and bless you inside of your beautiful creation. We acknowledge that you, through your son, Yahushua, the word created all things in six days and on the seventh you rested. And all this is yours, the heaven, the earth, and everything contained in it. Us, the gold, the silver, everything is all yours, Father. All this, all these treasures we see around us, Father. We love you so much, and we just rejoice in you. And we just ask that you keep opening our eyes to the wonderful matters written in your Torah, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. We love you, and we thank you, and we say Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Uh, great being here today with you. Um, I'm going to do some, some more stuff like this uh, in the future. I think this is kind of fun. I don't know. Which, tell me what you all think. Shabbat Shalom.
Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor does he stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. in the Torah of Yahuwah. But it's delight it's in the Torah of Yahuwah. And on his ways he meditates day Like a tree firmly planted by streams of living water, or shield to see in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and it only does he prospers since to lie. In the Torah, Yahweh, but in the still light. In the Torah, Yahweh, and on His way, He meditates. Jesus.
So 